Hey everyone, Alex Ortner here from RawFor30Days.com and I got a very special guest for you today, David Avocado Wolf. Uh, he's hanging out here at my home in Newtown. He did uh, an amazing talk on Wednesday night. Head to uh, head with Avatar, the film. Yeah, yeah that's right. It was, in a, it was in a movie theater and right next to, in that same movie theater was Avatar. So, uh, I mean, his place was sold out. Avatar was not. So, you know, I think Avatar's got to watch out. You know, let's see what's going to what's gonna happen there at the box office. We're coming after the biggest science fiction <laughs> film of all time <laughs> with an even bigger story, which we're going to get into. Yes. Uh, and it was, uh, just so you guys know, it was, it was, if you guys are local to Connecticut, it was at Catch a Healthy Habit in Fairfield, Connecticut. It's a fantastic place. Um, definitely make sure to check that out. And as far as you're speaking, where can they find out when you're doing talks like that? My entire schedule is always on davidwolf.com, W-O-L-F-E.com. Okay. It's also replicated on thebestdayever.com and on sacredchocolate.com. Okay. Uh, so I know you guys asked a lot of questions on the, the post this week for, uh, you know, we've been doing the Reversing Diabetes Action Day celebration and selling Simply Raw for 50% off this week, which has been amazing because so many people have been able to get a copy of that. Um, so, you know, we're going to talk, we're going to answer some of those questions you guys have both about some stuff on diabetes and some stuff just on general raw food stuff. So we're just going to kind of shoot it out here and go the flow. And, uh, and David's going to answer all, hopefully as many questions as we can get to here. So, um, first question, this is from Jerry. Uh, he said, I just started on a raw food diet two days ago. I was wondering how do I get all of what I, all of what my body needs as far as nutrients, fats, carbs, etc." Great question, and I wouldn't worry about it if you're two days into it. Okay. I'd, I'd more worry about it if you're two years into it. Okay. Generally, what we all need is more of a fast, the beginners anyway. So when you get onto a raw food diet, it's essentially everything is cleansing you because the density of the food is so much less. There's a much higher water content of the food is another way of saying that. And therefore, it's going to detoxify you. It's going to nourish you with real nutrients. In a lot of cases, it's the first time ever. And at some point, then you have to kind of consider where it's all heading, right, for you and your biology and what you actually need. And, and so what we're looking at is the overall spectrum of, in the raw food arena, raw foods like fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, seaweeds, grasses, sprouts, flowers, um, superfoods and super herbs. And in that genre, you can get everything that you need with the exception of perhaps vitamin B12 and vitamin K2. Um, and, and with the exception of long chain omega-3 fatty acids in high concentration. But you can get everything else. You can get all the vitamin E, you can get all the protein you need, you can get the polysaccharides that we need or the essential sugars. And we get those things basically from seaweeds and superfoods ultimately. Um, avocados are great, nuts and seeds are great. We need those for the phosphorus and for the omega-6 and for the monounsaturated fats. We can use coconut oil for saturated fat, which we need. And we can also get some of the interesting GLAs and, and some of the omega-3 that's not long chain from hemp seed, flax seed, evening primrose oil, etc. So, you know, basically the ultimate message of nutrition is make sure you don't eat too much and have a wide variety, whatever your diet is. And my guess would be too that a lot of people that are transitioning probably weren't getting everything they needed in their regular diet. It's very likely, in fact, my, my experience is, is that pretty much every Western person is very deficient in minerals. And what the effect of that is, is it, it affects your neurochemistry. And it causes people to be ungrounded, in, uh, in, unable to focus, can't sit down, can't concentrate, losing of memory, all of that stuff. And I will say this, that actually for your brain, um, not only do we need the omega-3s that we've all heard about, and especially the long-chain omega-3, fish oil contains long-chain omega-3, you can get it from algae, and algae oil concentrates if you want to take vegetarian or vegan options. Um, but we also need another very important cl class of foods for our nervous system and our brain is roots. And when I say roots, I'm not talking about potatoes, which are really an extended stem. It's not really a root. I'm really talking about turmeric. I'm talking about burdock root. I'm talking about radishes, I'm talking about maca, I'm talking about ginseng, I'm talking about some of the great Chinese herbs like ho shu wu. These are all very highly revered roots and they contain minerals and that, that appears to be where the game is. Sweet potato and yam is another one, very important. It can be eaten raw, you can juice it, it's wonderful. I think that's question number one. 
That's number one. So that was just number one. That was a lot there. I think you might have to pause and just replay that part. You know, go go after that. Uh, so question number two, jumping over over to diabetes. It's about diabetes. Um, tell me about fruit and diabetes. Should I have a, uh, fruit as a diabetic? Okay, so great great question. Um, this is this is a question that comes up quite a bit about sugar and low sugar diets. Yeah. You're better off binging on something sweet like blueberries as you're kind of cheating when you're trying to do a low sugar diet than to flip all the way into some kind of like potato chips or really intense like candy bar carbs or anything like that. So we want to be aware that fruit is a better choice than some of the other choices. It isn't the best choice. Ultimately, if we have blood sugar disorders, we don't really want to have anything excessively sweet. Berries in season are pretty good, especially if they're wild berries. In season, in reasonable amounts is a wonderful thing. Anything in excess, like 10 bananas at one sitting, is way out of bounds. Yeah. Um, can you have other kinds of fruits? For example, avocados, lemons, low sugar fruits like cucumbers, and the answer is yes, definitely, all of those. Um, make sure that you do have fruit in your diet because fruit is the joy and it is the water. It's really like the water of life. It's juicy, like a cucumber is yeah. juicy. You can get all that without sugar, of course, with a lemon or a cucumber. Um, you can get all those kinds of things with a tomato even, which has very low sugar content, if they agree with you. Yeah, cool. Um, weight loss. That's another another big question that's been here with several people on the blog. Uh, number one of the raw food diet, do you lose weight? And you know, what do you need to do specifically with the raw food diet? There are things you want to avoid, like raw bars, avocados, like what the, the high fat foods that people are thinking of. Do you want to avoid any of that stuff you're losing? If you're doing a raw food diet to lose weight, what do you want to focus on? Okay, great. So to, to lose weight, it's, it's essentially true that if you get on a raw food diet, a raw food based diet, you're going to lose weight automatically because there's just not food that sticks to your ribs. Yeah. You know, an avocado doesn't stick to your ribs in the same way a sour cream does. Yeah. It's a totally different experience. And you know, you digest, for example, raw sunflower seeds completely differently from the way you digest bread. Yeah. You know, so bread sticky, it's gluey. And we're attempting now to move away more from this gluey kind of stick to your rib stuff and raw food is part of that cultural trend that's actually occurring. To lose weight, it, when you get down to the nitty gritty of, okay, now you've lost 50 pounds, now you're into that zone where you want to be, let's say it's 110, yeah. but you're still at 120. Yeah. You know, you're like, oh God, do, you know, do I need to cut out avocado? Should I cut out mangoes? Should I cut out honey? What's the deal? It really depends on your metabolism. There is no right way for everybody. Some people lose weight by eating fat. Yeah. That's me. Yeah. I can eat so much fat you can't even believe it. But if I start putting in honey and mangoes, I start gaining weight like crazy. Um, so some people are the opposite. They lose weight eating sweet stuff. They gain weight immediately with fatty stuff. Is there any way for somebody to be able to know other than just trial and error? It's try well, we, we say it's a trial and success method. Yeah. There really isn't any kind of like single test you can say, okay, this is how you are, that's how you are. Yeah. You just, you'll figure it out over time. Yeah, okay. Uh, back to diabetes here. Uh, you know, one person was asking, in, in terms of the diet to have, what's the difference between a type one and type two in terms of what they should have, you know, with the raw diet. There, there, there oh, it's, a, it's the same one, approach. Same You're approach. talking about diabetes type one and type, yeah, two. type two. It's the same approach. This is something I learned with uh, Dr. Gabriel Cousins working there 13 years at the Tree of Life, is that um, whether a person is diabetes type one, which isn't all the same, there's plenty of different types of diabetes yeah. in the type one category, yeah. um, or whether a person is type two, they get the same program. Yeah. And that, that program is basically a mineral rich raw food diet with uh, very low sugar intake, actually no sugar intake, and nothing that contains dirt, mold, or fungus on it, as well as a whole battery of different types of supplements like enzymes. And one of the things we did do for people as a treat is feed them raw cacao beans in the Simply Raw the film, simple raw film yeah. which, was, which was great. Not sweetened, of course, because you can eat raw chocolate. My experience with diabetes and raw cacao has actually been very good. My feeling is that, that raw cacao is very um, counteractive to diabetes because it gives you the exact minerals that diabetes is symptomatic of missing, like magnesium, iron, chromium, yeah. um, as well as phosphorus, and copper and zinc. Yeah, okay. And um, in terms of type 1, because I know I get the question a lot with the film Simply Raw. They go, well, does this